Hello, and welcome to Agros of Physics. Today is day 50, and what I'd like to do today is look at a true Atwoods machine. Yesterday we dealt with the half Atwoods machine, and today we'll deal with a Atwoods machine where both masses are moving vertically. Once again, the key to this problem is going to be the direction of the forces. The heavier mass is going to be pulling down, which is going to pull the other mass up on the other side. However, the pulley in this case is actually translating the force 180 degrees. So the object that's moving up, that force pulling up on the object that's lighter, is actually going to act in the same direction as gravity because the gravitational force down is the reason the other mass is moving. So once again, we're going to look at the rotation of the pulley to denote the positive or negative um, values for the forces on our free body diagram. So as we move clockwise, we're going to call that positive. As we move counterclockwise, we're going to call that negative. So even though the free body diagrams are going to look the same for both um, masses, the direction of the forces or the sign of the forces is going to be radically different. Once again, we're going to have string connecting the two objects. So the string is going to provide a tension between the two. And because of Newton's third law, the tension in each of the ends of the rope are going to have the same value. So even though we may not know the value for T, for tension, we're going to be able to use the fact that it's the same for each to connect the two equations. They're going to share the same tension, and they're going to share the same acceleration as well. So let's look at a full Atwoods machine. And remember, this device was invented in 1784 in order to analyze motion with the technology of the day. We don't need to use high-tech mathematics or high-tech computers in order to analyze motion. We can do it using simply a pulley, a string, and two masses. OK. Now to look at an Atwoods machine, which is basically two objects connected by a string along a pulley. The pulley's job in this case is to translate the force an entire 180 degrees, and all of the forces are vertical. So what we need to do is start with labeling the two values, A and B, and then realizing what direction the problem is going to move in. And the 2 kilogram mass is going to pull down, the 1.5 is going to go up, and the problem will move in the clockwise direction. So that's going to be our positive. Anytime a pulley is involved, we need to worry about what direction the rotation is of the problem. Now, for our purposes, there's going to be no friction involved with the pulley. The pulley is going to be a frictionless pulley. And it's going to allow our jobs to be a lot easier. If you're dealing with advanced physics courses, maybe in college or maybe advanced placement physics, you would, you would have to worry about the friction of the pulley, and you deal with rotational dynamics. Um, the pulley itself would have um, a moment of inertia, and you'd have to be dealing with other forces involved. And that frictional force would be backwards um, from the clockwise. But for our purposes right now, we're just going to deal with a frictionless pulley and deal with this simple Atwoods machine. Free body diagrams would look like this. If we had object A, we'll put it here, we'd have the force of gravity down, 1.5 kilograms in the box and the tension going upward. For object B, it would be force of gravity down, 2 kilograms in the box, and tension upward. Since they're the same string, or it's connected to the same string, the tensions are equivalent. Now, at this point, we need to determine the force of gravity in each. So force of gravity is 1.5 kilograms times 9.8 which is 9.8 plus 4.9. That's a 7, that's a carry, that's a 14.7 total newtons. For the 2 kilograms, it's 2 times 9.8 meters per second squared. 2 times 9.8 is 19.6 newtons. Now that's all the forces we know. So what we need to do is realize that the 2 kilogram will move down, so that's going to be your positive direction and the A is going to move up, that's going to be your positive direction because rotation-wise, this is our positive direction clockwise. So if I look at equation B, it would be like this, Fg minus T equals Ma. And for equation A, it's going to be T minus Fg equals Ma. 
FG minus T for that, T minus FG for the other one. And the hardest part of this is keeping all your forces straight. So for B, it's going to be 19.6 newtons minus T equals 2 kilograms times A. And then for A, it's going to be T minus 14.7 newtons equals 1.5 kilograms times A. Now these two equations need to be substituted into one another. So what I'm going to do is simplify B. I'll solve for T. T equals 19.6 minus 2A. And then substitute that into equation B. I'm sorry, into equation A, which is going to be 19.6 minus 2A. That replaces this variable here. Minus 14.7 equals 1.5 times A. I'm going to bring the two over. And I'm going to get 3.5A on the right, 19.6 minus 14.7. And that's going to be a 4 and a 9. So 4.9 is there. So divide both sides by 3.5. And A. And I'm going to need my calculator. So let me get the calculator and I'll solve for my acceleration. So you end up with 4.9 divided by 3.5. And you have 1.4 meters per second squared. That's your acceleration. Now if we want to find the tension, I'll go back to equation B here. T equals 19.6 minus 2 times 1.4. So times 2, and then 19.6 minus second answer, and we're left with 16.8 newtons. So the acceleration is 1.4 meters per second squared, and the tension is 16.8 newtons. Full Atwoods machine. All right, we're going to do another Atwoods machine. This time we have a 7 kilogram mass on the left and a 3 kilogram mass on the right. The reason I want to do this is so that our rotation is opposite. Positive is going to be counterclockwise now. And what we're going to do is draw a free body diagram for each of the masses, the 7 kilogram. We have force of gravity down, tension up. And then for the 3 kilogram mass, force of gravity down and tension up. 3 kilogram mass is going to move up. That's going to be your positive. The 7 kilogram mass is going to move down. That's going to be your positive. All right, first and foremost, force of gravity. 7 times 9.8 is getting me 68.6 newtons. And then 3 times 9.8 is getting me 29.4 newtons. Well, that's all I know so far. So let's look at block A and block B. So for equation A, since down is positive here, Fg minus T equals Ma. And for block B, it's going to be T minus Fg equals Ma. 68.6 newtons minus T equals 7 kilograms times A. And 29.4, whoop, T minus 29.4 newtons equals 3 kilograms times A. All right, since well, equation B is not looking so pretty to begin with, let's rearrange that. T equals 29.4 plus 3A. Yep, and then we're going to plug that in to this equation here. So 68.6 minus... 29.4 plus 3A equals 7A. Now, the hardest thing here is this negative needs to distribute. So first, I'm going to distribute it to the 29.4, and then I'm going to distribute it to the 3A. And that's probably the hardest part of this, because we have that negative sign that distributes for both terms. Well, if we simplify this, we have 68.6 minus 29.4. And that's going to be 39.2. And that's going to equal, I'm going to add the 3 over here, 10A. Well, A is going to be 3.92 meters per second squared. 
39.2 divided by 10 is 3.92. Substitute the A in on this other equation, and we have 29.4 plus parentheses 3 times 3.92, close parentheses, and we end up with tension to be 41.16 newtons. So full Atwood's machine, counterclockwise in this case versus clockwise. But you need to keep the masses separate for each equation, and you need to make sure that the force of gravities are appropriate for each of the two different masses.